There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio all the way live from Las Vegas, a.k.a. Sin City, Nevada, with a good friend, Dr. Nathan Bryan. Brian, what's going on? I mean, Nathan, what's going on, my brother? How are you? It's all good. Life is good. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on. And yeah, I'm in Las Vegas uh, lecturing at a regenerative medicine conference. And- awesome. Well, you, as I was telling you off air, you can definitely tell that's Las, a Las Vegas curtain in your background. So you're definitely in a nice room. <laughs> yeah, the wind. It's one of my favorite hotels. Yeah, it's an awesome hotel for sure. It's still, it still has actually remained an awesome hotel. As you know, in Vegas, it's tough to remain in the top, but uh, somehow that hotel has stayed at the echelon, I would say, for, dude, what, close to 20 years now, right? I mean, it's been around a long time. Yeah, no, it's a staple here in uh, Vegas. Crazy. Um, all right. Well, so just real quick, um, um, Nathan has been on the show uh, a couple of times, and him and I go back about four or five years now since we first met, of course, at medical conferences. And he is a serious international leader in nitric oxide and molecular medicine. And his company, which is NO2U, makes, in my opinion, the best nitric oxide supplements and powders and just I mean, really, technically, anything you would like to get from uh, enhancing or increasing nitric oxide, which we'll talk about in today's podcast. But let me ask you, because you're making the rounds. I saw you, man, about a month ago um, in uh, in Fort Lauderdale, or not Fort Lauderdale, but oh, West Palm. Yeah, same thing, right? It's the airport. <laughs> you got to you got to take an Uber for 45 minutes. Um, but what what are your thoughts on regenerative medicine? On just what's happening in what I call biomolecular, biomedical. I mean, everything is massively expanding right now, right? Like there's all these new technologies, all these new peptides, all these new bioregulators, all this new stuff coming. Like, where do you think everything goes over the next three to five years? Well, I think without a doubt, regenerative medicine is the future of medicine. You know, we've learned so much over the past really 30, 40 years on really the mechanism of action of really every single chronic disease. Right. Um, there is. And so we're regenerative by nature, right? Aging is just the inability to repair and replace dysfunctional cells. And so if we can harness the regenerative potential of our own stem cells to then recapitulate kind of endogenous signaling and kind of restore missing nutrients and molecules or peptides or hormones and then get rid of the toxins in our body that are interrupting normal metabolism, <clears throat> then the human body is, re- is extremely regenerative and we can repair and replace and we can basically overcome the aging process. What do you think? I agree with all of that. What do you think though about the transhumanist viewpoint of making people biobots or maybe not biobots, but like, you know, going with the whole man machine merge, you know, obviously Ray Kurzweil and that group are all into the, the singularity. Like, do you see that as healthy for humanity or would you prefer to stay more organic? No, I look, I don't think we're, we're mortal humans, Jay. Yeah. You know, yeah. We have a divine creator that made us in, in Absolutely. The image. And so this whole, you know, manipulating, and I think, you know, gene therapy and MRNAs yeah. and all this, you know, it's, it's, I don't think it's sustainable, but I also think it's very dangerous. I agree. I'm a hundred percent agreement with you. It's crazy because I have all of the, that side of the world attempting to get on this podcast. I mean, I get bombarded every day with their different agencies from all across the country and I won't name names, but you know who these folks are. And it's like, I, I can't do it, man, because. I'm not a part of it. You know, I mean, granted, you know, a lot of them will say, but that's not true. Jay, what about blind people? They've never seen, and we have the ability to put chips in their brain or 
you know, Neuralink or, you know, all this stuff. And I'm just like, man, I'm sorry, but I'm an organic being. Yeah. I'm an organic being. Well, I mean, the truth is Nathan is that where does it go? Right. If we say yes, then how fast is it before the machine slash the computer, the AI, whatever you want to call it is actually manipulating the human species. No, that's right. Look, we're spiritual beings. We just have right. kind of a, a short resident time in that's a physical right. body. Uh, and I think we can certainly extend the life of humans and certainly extend our health span as we understand age-related disease. But this whole notion that we can become immortal and live you know, indefinitely, I think, is, is still science fiction. I don't think it can't be done with 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 thoughts and manipulation, but to me it goes against everything. And you know, I'm not sure I want to live no. forever. You know, there's there's certainly for me, and as a Christian and a believer and as a practicing Catholic, that there's there's a better life beyond the right. physical life we're living here. And uh, you know, I look forward to that. I think we have to make the best of our time here and, and leave a legacy and and improve mankind. Uh, but to me, this is just a transient state we're in and you know, eternal life happens in heaven and not here on earth. Yeah. I mean, obviously I'm in hundred percent agreement with you. Um, it just, I mean, the shit that we're seeing bro on, on Instagram and it's scary. I mean, it's just, I mean, again, I want to name some names, but I just won't for the podcast. So I don't get either of us in trouble, but I mean, I saw a, a, a an Instagram the other day for this person and I know who you know this person is and his skin looked jaundiced and I'm just like, what? Like, how can anyone look at this and actually think this is healthy, healthy, even though they've lowered their biological age by 25 years or whatever? I mean, you know, they claim all these millions of things. dollars. I mean, exactly. But I mean, it's like the craziest part is like, you know, it's like my buddy says, he says, does it pass the smell test? Does it smash pass the look test? Like if you look at this being and they look unhealthy and sick, if it, if it, if it clacks like a duck. It's just, <laughs> yeah. Now, look, you got to be a product of the product. And I think you and I are kind of examples of that. Yes. Uh, yes. I turned 100%. 50. I've got a biological age of, I think last I checked was like 32 or 36 year old. Yep. I haven't been sick in over 20 years. Um, you know, both yeah. of us travel a lot, but you know, it's very simple. The science is, is pretty complex, but the solutions to health and, and well being are, are really pretty simple. Yeah, they really are. And let's get into that right now. So, I mean, obviously you've been on the podcast before and we've talked about your supplements and, you know, for the, for the audience and for the record, my wife and I freak out if we run out before we travel, we have their sticks and we have their lozenges and I've, you know, and I'm talking about NO2U by the way. And of course there'll be a link after the show guys for you guys to purchase at a discount uh, with my affiliate code. But uh, I mean, I love this stuff, man. As I know, I told you this years ago, but uh, I mean, I literally don't, I Jones if I don't have it before my workout. Yeah, no, no me just, too. Look, it's, it's yeah. If I don't crazy. have the stick and put it in my water before I train, I'm like, Monica, where, where is it? Well, what you can I certainly know? tell the difference, right? If you work out with it and work out without it, wow. it's a night and day. And it honestly, it tastes amazing. I mean, like you, you know, I have so many supplement manufacturers who will mail stuff to me completely unapproved, and they'll be like, please, you know, please try it, test it out. You know, if you like it, you know, we'd love for you to promote it to your audience and stuff. And, and dude, I've tasted some nasty things. I mean, I've literally spit shit right out in my sink and been like, I don't even have the heart to even tell these people that this is absolute dog piss, but your stuff tastes really good. And it's like a taste that you never get, you know, it's not, there's no like receptor attenuation or anything. I mean, like you can always get that taste and it always, like you said, increases nitric oxide. So let's talk a little bit about nitric oxide just briefly, because I'm pretty sure my audience is pretty familiar with it, but why is nitric oxide and, and improving it as we age so important? Well, because it's, it's, it's a hormone, you know, just right. like testosterone or growth hormone, the older we get, well, the less we make, and it correlates very nicely with age related disease. But, you know, interesting thing about nitric oxide is it's a gas. Right. And it's a gas, it's produced in the lining of the blood vessels, it's produced in our neurons, it's produced by our immune cells. And once it's produced, it's gone in less than a second. So we published in, I believe, 2007 for the first time that nitric oxide was a hormone, that it's released from one cell, it has systemic effects and affects the, the activity and signaling in, in distal cells. But the challenge with it in developing safe and effective nitric oxide product technologies is how do you capture the biological activity of this fleeting gas? Yeah. 
you know, if you look at thing like testosterone replacement therapy or estrogen in, in women, these are stable molecules that are water soluble. They get clear pharmacokinetics and they, they're produced, they're secreted by our gonads, and then they initiate these cell signaling that, you know, regulates many biological activities. And nitric oxide's the same. So, you know, it, that kind of changed the course of how we thought about nitric oxide based therapies because if we want to replete other hormones like testosterone or insulin, for example, Sure. In diabetics, insulin-dependent uh, diabetes, we don't give patients 11 or 21 amino acids and hope their body can synthesize insulin out of it, right? Right. Or we don't give DHEA and hope your body generates testosterone out of it. You actually replete that missing molecule, and that's what our products do. We're the only company in the products on the market that actually generate nitric oxide gas. So if your body can't make it, then we got to do it for you. And then we also understand the enzymology and the biochemistry to the extent that we can actually improve the body's ability to make nitric oxide on its own. So what does it do? Well, it opens up blood vessels. Yeah. It improves oxygenation of every organ, tissue, and cell in the body. It mobilizes our stem cells so we can repair and replace dysfunctional cells. It actually prevents our telomeres from shortening and extends longevity. And then I think on the, or I don't think, I know because of the science <laughs> that it you know, for in performance, improving performance, whether it's sexual performance or athletic performance or cognitive performance, it's improving mitochondrial function. So we're improving the energy efficiency production of the cell and we're inducing mitochondrial biogenesis. So the net effect is you have better blood pressure, better oxygenation, um, you become really metabolically optimal and you yeah. can utilize oxygen to make cellular energy more efficiently. You've got re, you're replete with with stem cells, so you can repair and recover. In in essence, that's what nitric oxide is. It's really the holy grail in in cardiovascular medicine and really in this whole emerging field of longevity. I remember when my bi, um, one of my copywriters in, interviewed you for that article that we wrote, which again, dude, is amazing. That was actually in 2020. Can you imagine that wow. goes that far back? I know. Um, and I, you know, even I, who, who do a lot, I do, I'm a prolific reader and obviously researcher and stuff like that. I was really blown away at just how little people were really placing from an emphasis standpoint on nitric oxide supplementation. Now, obviously I'm a big low dose Cialis guy and, you know, you helped write in the article about the, the importance of actually using your product in combination. If you're using a low dose Cialis, you know, not just for the sexual improvement, but for obviously the nitric oxide stimulation, <clears throat> improving endothelial function, you know, all of those things. But since that article, and I, I know you know this, and maybe some of my audience do, do, does too, um, my wife and I have always a bottle of the loss <laughs> on our nightstand. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, as, as an aging person in a contaminated world, or, you know, as I like to say, an energy field that is just full of absolute gunk like i mean you gotta have you know your lozenges you know in combination with whether or not you're using a low dose of uh cialis and obviously a lot of people are these days but man i mean it's a notable improvement yeah. in erectile strength uh and just like you said just the energy and performance that you have when you're actually engaged sexually there's a big difference when you're not using it because you know there's been times where i didn't have it when i traveled you know, and my wife were on like on exotic vacation or whatever. And, you know, we were having more sex than we would if we're at home with the kids and stuff like yeah. that. And I was like, damn, what is the difference? And I'm like, oh, shit, I don't have my lozenges. Yeah. No, look, it's it's absolutely essential. I, I, I tell people all the time, there's only two people in the world who need nitric oxide. There's the people who are sick and want to get well. And there's the people who are well and don't want to get sick. Exactly. And so you, you have to have it. But, you know, in terms of the effects and the potentiation of um you know, PD-5 inhibitors, whether it's yeah. the low-dose Cialis or, or the episodic Viagra. Yeah. You know, these drugs have been on the market now since almost 26 years, since 1998. A long and, time. And yeah. you know they only work in 50% of the men in which they're prescribed. So it's billions crazy. of dollars, but it's a drug that works at best in 50% of the population. And the reason for that is once you understand the mechanism of action of these drugs, you can start to realize that the non-responders to low-dose Cialis or Viagra are because they can't make enough nitric oxide to exactly. activate cyclic GMP, which these drugs prevent the breakdown of. So that told us, you know, years ago that erectile dysfunction is a symptom of nitric oxide deficiency. Yes. So you can actually, so nitric oxide turns the switch on and then the Cialis, the Viagra, the PD-5 inhibitors leave it on. They prevent the breakdown of the signal that leads to vasodilation. And, you know, that's also the reason you're warned against 
you know, four hour erections and an unsafe drop in blood pressure. So you have to be mindful of the dosing of these. But, you know, we, we did a clinical study on this years ago where we took men who had been on low dose Cialis for at least 90 days. So they know the effects of kind of what the expectations are. Sure. And then we put them on our lozenge and then for 30 days, then wash them out for two weeks and then cross them over either on active or placebo. And what we found was that the nitric oxide releasing lozenge improved erectile function based on international erectile uh, function score and the international or the erectile hardness grading score. So just the quality of the erections, the hardness of the erections improved when we added the nitric oxide lozenge. So it just goes proof principle. You can prime the pump, you know, pun intended. I mean, I mean, a hundred percent, that's a fact. And again, I've been using them for four years and again, my wife loves them. And, and you know, I think it's important, you know, for females, cause I have a, you know, a growing and sizable female audience now that they work just as equally well to improve sexual function for women too, because just like, you know, the PD five inhibitors stimulate, you know, blood flow to the organ of the penis. It also stimulates blood flow to the clitoral hood and, you know, the labia and outer, you know, uh, tissue of the vaginal wall, vaginal walls. So it's like women get the same effect. And again, like I said, my wife and I both use it. And there's a, dip, a massive difference. I was going to ask you, though, about the guys, the 50% non-responders, because this is obviously, as you know, a weird conversation to have when people say, you know, I use five milligrams and I've even gone up to 12 and 15 milligrams of Cialis and I get nothing. And then, you know, they are giant bellies. Is, 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 it, is it more a result of, because obviously you said that there are certain defects going on. Is it more a result of just like uh, insulin, insulin, uh, metabolic dysregulation and insulin, poor insulin signaling that's causing or, or preventing the Viagra slash the Cialis to actually work at the tissue level? Yeah, well, it's actually a, a decrease in the function of the NOS enzyme, the nitric oxide synthase Got enzyme. It. And insulin resistance, metabolic disease, all of that yeah. leads to, or nitric oxide deficiency is what leads to right. metabolic disease. So nitric oxide is kind of the primary step and signal yeah. for insulin signaling, glucose uptake, normal right. metabolism, regulation of blood pressure, and even lipids in, in terms of triglycerides. So yeah, all the common risk factors of cardiovascular disease, whether it's yeah. diabetes and you know poor diet, lack of physical activity, all that has been shown to decrease nitric oxide production, which then leads to high blood pressure, erectile dysfunction, insulin resistance, diabetes, Alzheimer's, I mean, every age-related chronic disease. So what we have to do is focus on restoring the function of this enzyme. Yeah. Now you can produce nitric oxide. You can dilate the blood vessels. And, you know, going back to, to women, I mean, the, the anatomy is obviously a little bit different, but the underlying physiology is exactly the same for yes, it is. erections, clitoral erections, and orgasm. Because for a woman to have an orgasm, you know, there's clear mechanism of that. And so an orgasm occurs when there's an increase in pressure in the right. labia, in the clitoris, and that, that's causal for all, or, um, orgasm. But if you can't produce nitric oxide, you don't get dilation, you don't get engorgement, and you don't get the increase in pressure. So that clearly explains the reason women become anorgasmic. And if there's female sexual dysfunction or function disorder, you know, we focus on nitric oxide because that's fundamental. And then obviously you, you start to address other issues, whether it's hormone replacement or, you know, social issues or, or psychological issues. But you know, men, are, we're, we're simple beings. It's usually just yeah. a blood flow problem, right? Women, it's a little bit more complicated. You got to kind of address some other issues. But fundamental to that is is the vascular issue involving nitric oxide. Would you say for people who are, call them insulin resistant, metabolically diseased, deranged, whatever, would you say that it's actually critically important as they're attempting to lose body fat to, you know, decrease inflammatory markers that they're also using a nitric oxide supplement at the same time in order to improve the cascades? No, absolutely. We published this for the first time in 2009 showing that nitric oxide is part of insulin signaling in right. glucose uptake. So when insulin is secreted from the pancreas, it binds to insulin receptors and then it starts an intracellular signaling cascade. And then it, the terminal step in that is a GLUT4 translocation where it binds glucose, clears it from the circulation. And that's how we regulate blood sugar. But intermediate in that is the cell's ability to produce nitric oxide. So if you have endothelial dysfunction and your body can't make nitric oxide, then that explains insulin resistance because you're still getting insulin secretion. Insulin still binding the insulin receptor, but the GLUT4 never gets the signal in the cell to go and bind glucose and bring it into the cell. 
because that activation is from nitric oxide. But right. again, if the cell can't make nitric oxide, GLUT4 doesn't get the signal. You get elevated in blood sugar, tells the pancreas to create more insulin, then you get hyperinsulinemia, hyperglycemia. And that's the inflammatory cascade we see in people with metabolic disease and diabetes. Do you guys, have you guys developed, I'm sure you have, but do you guys have an actual test to see how deficient a person can be or is in not producing nitric oxide? Is there a way to actually see it uh, from like a, 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 a full blood uh, scope? You know, in the research lab and basic science, yeah, we can draw blood, we can we can test saliva, we can do tissue biopsies, and we can yeah. quantify the amount of nitric oxide that that patient may be producing. But clinically, number one, no, there's not a clinically validated blood lab blood labs right. that can determine nitric oxide. You know, about 15 years ago, I developed a salivary test strip. Yeah, that that you could apply your saliva to this test strip, and you know, it could change colors. A bright pink would tell us that you know there's you got a, a good reservoir of nitric oxide activity, but I don't use those strips anymore because you know, what we were finding was there were a lot of false positives. Yeah. And so you would see the 50 year old, overweight, obese, diabetic, hypertension, well, like ODD. And they light up this test strip and they go, wow, I'm doing great. No, dude, you're actually, you've got an oral infection and it's a local immune response due to an active oral infection. And it's com they're completely devoid of nitric oxide. It's like, hey, bro, you should look in the mirror. You're not doing great. <laughs> That's right. So now what, what I tell people is just rely on symptoms. Right. You know, and if you have an elevation in blood pressure, anything over 120 over 80, then your body's not making enough nitric oxide. If you have any degree of erectile dysfunction, and if you can't get up and walk up a flight of steps or do 20, 30 minutes of aerobic right. exercise without getting short of breath and, you know, become exercise intolerant, then... Obviously, that's a sign and symptom of nitric oxide deficiency. But again, going well, back to this so premise of earlier, you know, why test? Yeah. Because it, it, I take nitric I've been taking this technology for probably 20 years. Yeah. And I take it because, not because I need it, I take it because I don't want to need it. Yeah. And because, as you mentioned earlier, you know, we live in a very toxic world. <laughs> We're exposed to chemicals and we, we need a daily kind of a nitric oxide boost to maintain normal production, but just to have it available to help regulate blood pressure, circulation, mediate inflammation that we're chronically exposed to. I mean, just imagine how much high intensity, just imagine all of your biological systems and how irradiated they're getting from just the light in the Vegas conference rooms, the hotels, walking into the casino, going to the restaurant. I mean, and that's why people, we yeah, exactly. Yeah, you, you forgot to put those on. But 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 I mean, that's the least of your problems at this point, right? Now I, mean, I laugh at that nowadays. I don't even tell people, hey, put your glasses back on because I mean it's unavoidable. So as you were saying, like the only thing we can really do is make sure that all the major tools in the tool belt are being utilized and that we're living a lifestyle that all the big needle movers are being met. And obviously, nitric oxide supplementation is a massive, massive needle mover mover. I mean, again, I will say, you know. Are your hormones optimized? Check. Are you living insulin controlled? You know, are you using nitric oxide supplementation? Of course, are you training? You know, hopefully you're doing resistance and cardiovascular. Uh, and of course, you know, sleep hygiene, are you getting six to seven hours of sleep a night? You know, if you got, if you got those things locked in, I mean, you know, somebody would argue and say, yeah, but Jay, what about, you know, growth hormone agonist peptides and stuff like that. I mean, you know, those are, those are nice to have, but yeah, the nice. other stuff, yeah, I mean, the other yeah, stuff yeah. is way more important. No, I agree. Yeah, and the challenge is, you know, when people, because I do this, you know, we have these conversations, people go, oh, well, I've been, I've been taking nitric oxide for 10 years, and, you know, it really didn't do anything for me, and I'm going. Right, it's like some crappy tablet or something. No, they then got I, it. I go, well, what, you say DNC. you're taking nitric oxide, what are you taking? They go, oh, well, I take it in the form of a beet or a chew or a gummy or <laughs> perhaps so I'm going. Beet root um, juice, bro. No wonder it doesn't have any effect on you. In fact, it's making you worse. The chews and the gummies are completely destroying the microbiome. The last thing Americans need is more sugar in the form of these gummies and chews. And, you know, I tell people that, you know, we joke about it, but it's really, it's no joking matter because no, it's not. these companies that are doing this could kill the entire field because of that. People go, oh, well, I've tried nitric oxide. Nitric oxide didn't work for me. No, right. you were defrauded on these products. And yes. You take a product that produces nitric oxide like we do, you will always get a benefit. And so that's, that's the source of one of my daily frustrations 
is dealing with these companies out there that are selling people a bill of goods that really provide no nitric oxide benefit whatsoever. Well, you and I are cut from the same cloth. I mean, I, I'm, it's the same story for me. I mean, I tell people that literally 90% of the products in the marketplace are fake. No, that's exactly right? right. I mean, let, let's, let's be honest. I mean, there's no sterility process and control in the supplement industry. Uh, you have absolutely no way to know. And, you know, very truthfully, um, Nathan, is that you can be with an amazing company and have it tested independently on your own. And then how do you know the next batch is the same? Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's kind of what differentiates us because we have an actual drug manufacturer mm. that manufactures our products and we go through quality control. If our products don't generate yep. nitric oxide and we, can, we can't quantify it, verify it and detect Throw it, them out. then we don't, you know, there's extensive quality control. And so we go through the same rigor as drug companies do. We do yeah. stability data. We do, you know, microbiology analysis. We do heavy metal testing. And if it doesn't pass that muster, then these products don't come to market. And you know, the other thing we're doing is we're actually developing nitric oxide drugs. So we've been very successful in the nutrition dietary supplement. But, you know, this technology is so powerful that we're going through FDA and we'll have drugs, FDA approved drugs on the market in the next year, I predict, for specific indications. So now I think that's going to be a game changer because, you know, that's most awesome. allopathic physicians don't even, you know, they give nitric oxide lip service, but, you know, they don't put any real really test them in it because they they're used to writing prescriptions for fda approved drugs yeah once we get this approved and we can improve their armament and in, in treating their patients then nitric oxide is going to be you know kind of like fish oil or your daily vitamin d that's awesome uh well let's talk about that but before we we talk about like stuff in the pipeline coming from you guys and then just your 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 views and insights on the marketplace and where it's going um i did want to talk about the oral you know, component of how yeah. so many, I mean, dude, don't even get me going on this. I mean, you think of the tooth, the toothpastes, the mouthwashes, I mean, all the shit that they sell at the pharmacies or at Walmart or at Target. I mean, dude, I mean, most of it is literally stripping the mouth, the gums, the enamel. I mean, I can't even imagine what is actually happening in the mouth. So, I mean, would you say that almost what? 85 to 95 percent of those products are also just completely stripping any nitric oxide production completely it's just gone right yeah now look we've published on this for the past probably 15 years um, but yeah these I mean this is a wreck and so I look at the general population everywhere I go and everywhere I travel not only in the US but around the that's world that's not a good sight no man I look and I go no wonder we're sick I mean we got the sickest people on the face of the earth and it's because of everything that you know, I haven't watched TV since November of 2020. I was fed awesome. up. I haven't turned me my too. TV. Yeah, no, me neither. But when I did, you know, you see the commercials and, you know, this mouth oh, kills 99.9% .9 of the bacteria in your mouth. And they go, these people, these companies are advertising this. I mean, this is dangerous. And here's what's happening. You know, just like using antibiotics, you know, no physician, nobody in their right mind would tell you you need to take an antibiotic every day yeah. for the rest of your life because that makes people sicker. It's destroying the microbiome and the, the bacteria that live in and on our body outnumber our human cells 10 to 1. And these bacteria are what we call symbionts, right? They yeah. provide 3 million gene products in the human genome only codes for 23,000 gene products. Crazy. So these bacteria, when we kill the microbiome, it destroys the metabolic processes that are contributing important chemical, biochemical reactions to the human host. So, you know, when you use mouthwash, believe these commercials because they do kill 99.9% .9 of the bacteria in your mouth. And what happens? It shuts down nitric oxide production. Your blood pressure goes up. You develop erectile dysfunction yep. and you lose the protective benefits of exercise. So I think about this because I see people all the time, look, they eat, you know, a plant-based, these, these vegans kill me because they go, oh, well, I eat nothing to plant. <laughs> You're the same. But then they go, but, and then I exercise and then I still have high blood pressure and they're metabolically unfit. And I go, well, do you use mouthwash? And they go, well, of course. And if you're using mouthwash, you never, you don't get a nitric oxide benefit from no. a plant-based diet. You lose nope. the cardioprotective benefits of exercise. So it completely destroys everything we know about health and wellness. So I tell people, you have to stop using mouthwash. I mean, this is, and, and we, you know, we published a first paper in 2014 showing that People use mouthwash have a higher blood pressure. 
And then in 2019, we published a, a seminal paper showing that using mouthwash is causal for hypertension. If you use mouthwash, and in this study, we took young, healthy patients with normal blood pressure, and then all we did was give them mouthwash twice a day for seven days. We did daily tongue scrapings to see what's happening to the oral bacteria. We monitored their blood pressure, and after seven days, in some of these patients, we saw a 26 millimeter increase in blood pressure. We wow. made them clinically hypertensive by using mouthwash just for seven days. And so this explains, you know, what's called resistant hypertension. So patients who have high blood pressure, they go to their doctor and they put them on a blood pressure medicine. And these are typically what's called ACE inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers, calcium channel antagonists, or diuretics or beta blockers. But yet we know from the data, 50% of these patients who are put on these drugs don't respond with better blood pressure. And why is that? Well, it's because their hypertension are, is probably due to oral dysbiosis from using mouthwash. Or worse yet, using fluoride in their toothpaste, because fluoride is the exact same thing as mouthwash. It's antiseptic. So now when you tell people, okay, well, let's, let's get rid of fluoride in your toothpaste. And by the way, stop using the mouthwash. And let's give that 30 days and see what happens. And they come back and remarkably, their blood pressure is normal. I mean, think about how disruptive that is. And that's cost savings, right? We just tell people, use a non-fluorinated toothpaste and stop using a mouth rinse. And then let's, let's restore and let's support the oral microbiome. Let's stimulate nitric oxide production. And now remarkably, their blood pressure is normal. It's, it's incredible. I mean, it, I, I mean, I shake my head because I mean, I mean, you know, I'll ask you, you know, because my audience will get mad if I don't. But I mean, is there any products in the marketplace that you guys could that you technically or your company can even stand behind from a standpoint of like, you know, a plaque rinse or, you know, any of that? Or are they all just absolute horseshit? You know, I've tested anything that says antiseptic. It's antiseptic and it's killing the good, good bacteria. Sure. Killing the bad bacteria. So believe the antiseptic label. But no, you know, we've tested a lot of things. There's, we've tested a lot, but there's still a lot out there that we haven't tested. But here's what I've been working on, Jay, for really the past two and a half years is, can we create, number one, a non-fluorinated toothpaste that can not only uh, maintain the diversity of the oral microbiome, but basically re remineralize teeth and, and right. provide a benefit? Right. And then can we develop a mouth rinse that, again, can selectively kill the pathogenic bacteria, the gingival bacteria, sure. and the caries-causing bacteria, while supporting the ecology of the non-pathogenic commensal bacteria. Right. And so I've been working on a, on a toothpaste and a mouth rinse for about two and a half years, and we've just kind of solved the puzzle on that. So we've created a toothpaste and a mouth rinse that will improve the diversity, not destroy the microbiome, but actually enhance it and improve nitric oxide production. When can I sell that? <laughs> Uh, probably it's going to probably be. We just got uh, pricing on it, and we'll start manufacturing probably in the next uh, sixty or ninety days. So, oh my God, that's going to be the biggest order. No, so, look, so you're going to sell it from No to you, right? Same, same. Spot yes, so we have we have, a, we have a portfolio of companies, but yeah, it will certainly be available to, direct to consumer. And, and once we launch it, it's going to be it's going to be a barn burner because this. Dude, is I'm going to be your biggest affiliate seller in the world. I mean, like that's like maybe my number one get is how can we improve well let me ask you let me go deeper on that then now like what about obviously it's difficult i mean if you guys already developed it that's awesome i know coming from you it'll be amazing but like did you guys ever look into doing anything with like some of the bpc you know 157 peptide analogs by for improving you know the, like the gum line and stuff like that because you know i've obviously got chemists yeah. underground people and they've compounded stuff where i mean it's incredible what it does to the to the enamel as far as improving it. Yeah, no, trying. look, I've used, I've used that peptide for, you know, injuries and just kind of daily course. maintenance. And it's, it's, yeah. it's incredible peptide. But now what we try to do and, you know, is obviously we want to create innovative product technology that makes people better. Yeah. But also more importantly, or just as important, not more importantly, but just as important is we want to make it, you know, cost effective. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you know, a lot of the things we do, you know, making a solid dose form of nitric oxide gas or even a topical nitric oxide. It's not cheap. Is, it's not cheap. And so we want to, you know, we don't want price to be a limiting factor sure. in, to where there's really global accessibility to, to what we develop. 
That's awesome. But yeah, there's there's always ways we can improve this, but it's at the at, at the expense of increasing the price. Yeah, well, you'd have to do so. So I'm actually so off air. We'll talk because I have somebody who's been talking to me about doing this for a long time. So I would connect this person with you because that would be a clinical version. So are you guys planning on doing like a clinical version too? No, look, everything we do, we want we want to put this in the hands of people around the world, right? We want to have direct access, but we also want to give physicians, you know, prescription medications, whether right, they work. You know, physicians or dentists With or no dentists. Side effects. Yeah. That actually work and make their patients better. And that's really the kind of what we're doing. So we'll we'll have product technology in every major distribution channel around the world, from drugs to consumer product goods uh, to things in, in dental medicine. You know, we're we're finally getting the attention, Jay, of the American Dental Association because they're you know, they're still, you know, advocating fluoride and fluoride rinses and root canals and 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 mouthwash. It's unbelievable, dude. It's but unbelievable. I'm gonna be. I got a meeting where, where I'm presenting before the American Dental Association in Chicago in a couple of weeks because they can no longer ignore the data, the basic science, or more importantly, the clinical data. That's awesome. So our goal is to change the standard of care, not just in, you know, allopathic medicine, but in dental medicine because I think yeah. dentists can be your best friend or your worst enemy. They can. De dentists are well. I'm so. I don't know if you saw this because we put it on Instagram and it went viral, but uh, I did a, I did a thing in my own field test in 2022 before my wife and I sold our houses in San Diego and moved to Mexico. And now, as you know, we're back in Florida, yeah. Tampa. But I did a field test where I went to eight different dental offices and I asked the dentists, and some of them were some of the biggest dentists in San Diego. Uh, I never, you know, I've never mentioned any names, but I asked them about fluoride, and I swear to God, <laughs> Nathan. Not a single one of them told me that there was any dangers of flor with fluoride. I mean, it was literally mine. It was, I mean, well, it was, it was mind numbing and blowing, but it was like, okay, so these guys are literally under some form of perverse mind control that they're taught, you know, in dental school that fluoride is healthy. It, I mean, it's, it's truly incredible how covered up that really is. But so you're right. So, I mean, like that's an industry because most people in the dental world are actually really kind souls. Like they're, they truly do desire to help and, and, and not to harm, but they're just so brainwashed and so lied to that well, you I have to call, you over, have to overcome a lot of inertia. Now that's the problem. It's not, I do the, I say the same thing about physicians, you know, they get into this field because they, most of them generally want to help people. So I don't Absolutely. blame the physicians. I don't blame the dentist. Yeah. I blame the system. Yeah, it's you system. know, I taught in medical school for, for many years and taught future physicians. And it's the curriculum. I mean, the curriculum, the way it's that insane, dude. are trained, it's, you know, the first and second year you take, you know, your biochemistry, your physiology, your pathology. One, and then one you take nutrition one class. Pathology. And then you take one nutrition pathology. class. And then you forget everything you know about biochemistry. And then you go into <clears throat> rotations. And once you learn, you know, diagnoses and ICD-10 codes and how you pay and what you, right. you make a diagnosis. The There's really the finite things you can do to help that patient. And that's the standard of care. But the standard of care has failed us for a hundred years. And the biggest farce of that to add on to that or to pack over the top of that is that, the you know, like you said, they eventually get to a place where the pharmaceutical reps dictate who, what medicines, scripts they write. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, it's a very, very powerful system that, you know, will eventually fall upon itself because it's it clear. Will. It's happening now. It's yeah. happening now. You're blowing up. I'm blowing up. People like us are blowing up. Like, as you said, and that's where we'll go with this, you know, to end this podcast, but regenerative medicine slash whatever this is, this bio, you know, call it health optimization, but basically biomedical expansion where the system is bifurcating, whereas like obviously the people that still, you know, put their names and their money into the insurance, allopathic, sick care, illness medicine. And then there's us like where it's like, oh no, you know, I will work with the best and the brightest and I will use the most innovative means and methods. And it's, and, and, and the allopathic is cr collapsing. I mean, and you also know, and you know, we, we're not going to talk about this in the ways that you and I could talk about this off air, but what has happened to the globe in the last four years has basically been a giant population control mechanism. And, you know, without saying anything specifically, a lot of people are, as you know, are looking for healing yeah, and many I, of them will not admit that they're quote unquote looking for healing because they've been so gaslighted and, you know, pigeonholed and positioned and forced and all this other stuff. So like this business that you and I are in is literally going to 10 X and maybe 50 X, even from where we're at right now. And we've seen unprecedented expansion in just the last 24 months. Yeah, look, no doubt. I mean, 
if there's anything that came out of the past four years, it, it put people's health and wellness top of mind. Yes. Because everybody knows someone who died as a result of whatever happened from the disease yes. itself, from the so-called yes. treatment <laughs> for the disease. And, and by the way, we all know people right now, too, that are dying of turbo cancers, which is very real. Yeah. Very now, look, the real. data the data don't lie. I mean, you can't right. be... The so-called experts can no longer ignore the data. So yes. you know, my yes. goal and what I try to pr preach, and I think what you preach is, look, the information is out there. What we've learned in science and medicine over the past exactly. 20 years is unlike any other time in the history of mankind. So we, we know the mechanism of chronic disease. And so our goal, and I think the beauty of these podcasts, Jay, is that we can, we can educate and inform consumers and patients so they can start making decisions to affect their own life. And our goal is to get information out there and education to where people never have to see a physician for a chronic health issue. I mean, look, acute trauma, you know, there's surgery and things like that, and, and right. trauma is always going to be necessary. People can have accidents right. and need to go to the hospital and see a really good physician. If, you're got, if you're gut shot and bleeding out. Yeah, yeah, take, take me to the hospital, please. I'm not going to heal myself. But, you know, all these, you know, specialized medicine of, of endocrinologists and cardiologists and all this treating age-related chronic disease. Insane. You know, we can prevent that. And then you should never have to go. And I, you know, I, I see a physician once a year, a concierge practice, just to kind of get a work done. But I haven't been exactly, sick dude. in over 25 years. I haven't lost a day of work due to illness in over 25 years. And it's not that I live in a sterile bubble. I'm on an airplane right. and hotels all around the world every yeah. week. It's just right. I, I pay attention to my body. I listen to my body and I give my body what it needs so it can, you know, combat infections and illnesses and fight off viruses and maintain good blood flow and, you know, it's hard work, but, you know, it's harder work if you get sick trying to get well. That's what I tell people all the time, you know, is that they don't really understand that the incidents that you will absolutely have if you don't do the preventative things that you and I do will literally crater all of the savings you think that you're making by not paying, you know, the outside cash specialists, you know, whoever it is you see, I mean, functional medicine people, whatever, even if it's just a chiropractor or somebody that stretches you or, you know, does fascial, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Active release technique massage. Yeah. I mean, all these people that say to me, oh, I don't have, I can't afford all that stuff. I'm like, dude, you can't afford not, not to do that stuff. Because one incident, and I mean, here's the statistics. 67% of all adults in the West, and this counts from Canada, the United States, and I think not Mexico, but parts of Latin America, experience medical bankruptcy at some point yeah. in their life, 67%. And as you just said, that would never happen if you're living a life like you and I are, because bro, how are we going to get medically bankrupt if we don't go for them to bankrupt us? Yeah, that's right. Look, you may, it's, and it's, you know, you may, people ask me, well, what do you do? And I go, well, I go to a chiropractor once or twice a month, not because I have back pain, but because I want to maintain structural alignment and make it's sure optimization. That it's optimization. And I get a massage once a week and I go and get the exact same. same so exact people, well, how do you have time to do this? And I go, well, you know what? I really don't have time to do this, right. but I make time. If you exactly. wait till you have time, look, we're all busy. You'll never do it. But I make time. I make time to get up five 30 every morning, do exactly. my workout, sit in a sauna, do my meditation, do my prayers. And that's how I start the 100%. day. Is yeah. it disruptive. Yeah. But I think that, you know, the, it, it pays off. It's disruptive to the system. Yeah. We're, we're exactly the same. All right, man. I'm so grateful that you came on here today. Um, before I let you go, though, I mean, I'm so excited about that mouthwash and toothpaste. Uh, what else is coming from you guys? And then maybe just tell me, like, where do, what do you see just the nitric oxide business? Like, how much more expansion is coming in just that industry? Because like you said, I mean, it's the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. Now, look, we're, we're excited about the toothpaste and the mouth rinse. It's, it's going to be called Breath of Life. That's going to be our brand because oh, microcoxide is this breath of life, and it's going to, you know, it's so an amazing awesome. product technology. Uh, so stay tuned to that. Probably 90, 120 days we'll have that to market. But, you know, for me, kind of what I think is going to be my legacy player, one of my legacy plays, is getting this technology approved through the FDA. So we've got a drug for ischemic heart disease. Awesome. Stage three clinical trials that I think is going to be a game changer. Uh, we've got a drug for Alzheimer's, and nitric oxide addresses the root cause of Alzheimer's. It improves cerebral yeah. blood flow, it, it improves glucose uptake and insulin resistance, and it prevents protein misfolding. So you basically get to the root cause of Alzheimer's. And then we've got a topical nitric oxide drug for 
diabetic ulcers and non-healing wounds. And, you know, that's going to be, that'll change the landscape of wound care. You know, we treat wounds the same today we did as 50 years ago. Nitric oxide kills the infection, gets blood flow to the wound, and it's, it'll completely eliminate uh, non-healing wounds and hopefully save a lot of limbs and amputations in, in diabetic ulcers. So that's, that's amazing. the future, I think. And, and, and as we build out our drug, I, you know, how we deliver nitric oxide, I don't think there'll be a single clinical indication where nitric oxide wouldn't be beneficial. So we'll get drugs for heart failure, pulmonary hypertension, um, and we'll, we'll go through the rigor of getting these drugs approved so we can change the landscape of healthcare and get away from sick care and, and really get to the root cause of, of disease. That's amazing. Uh, so I got to ask, how far are you like in the, in the clinical trial fit stages? Are you within a couple of years to getting some now, of those I drugs? Think, yeah, I think this year we'll have our ischemic heart disease drug approved. And my goal is to have the drug application filed with the FDA, maybe by the end of the year, if not Q1 2025. Awesome. And, you know, so I anticipate within a year, within 12 months, we'll have our ischemic heart disease drug approved. The Alzheimer's, we're probably looking at two years. The uh, topical drug, probably same kind of timeline. But, you know, we're positioning my drug company called Bryant Therapeutics for an IPO later this year. So that's awesome, man. Listed on NASDAQ, and we're going to be a major, major force um, in pharma and in the consumer product goods category. Congratulations. Yeah, no, I, mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, you're a great man and uh, you, you, you do things for the right cause. And I'm, I'm really well, I'm not doing it. Me. Yeah, I'm not doing it for the money. You know, I'm not. Doing no, this I know that. Today. No, I mean, because anybody who knows you knows that. Yeah. <laughs> and that, you know, I think that's because I think we have an obligation. You and I yeah. both. If we have to, if we know what we know and we know it works. We have an obligation to society to make sure this sees the light of day. And, you know, I've been offered a, a lot of money. Uh, to, to sell these companies. And, and I think what these pharmaceutical companies would do would probably shelve it and it would never oh, they shut you down. Yeah. They, they would have literally been. just pay you 50 million, and shut you down. Yeah. But again, there's not a, there's not a number yeah. that would allow me yeah. to sell this and, and not move it forward. So that's awesome. I'm excited man. about that. And yeah, it's, it's going to change the world. I'm absolutely convinced. That's amazing. Well, so, so guys and gals and all the amazing people that do watch the Jay Campbell podcast, obviously as always support the people that come on, uh, definitely follow Doc at IG because I do. And uh, if you want to go on LinkedIn, does anybody follow anybody on LinkedIn, bro? Yeah, LinkedIn. <laughs> you know, I'm getting a lot of following on on LinkedIn, and then I, I, know, I don't we tell both you. Do, but it's like it's one of those things where it's like sometimes the message comes in and somebody's trying to connect. You know? oh, it's a lot of solicitation too. <laughs> but I will tell you, my my Instagram was hacked, so all this nonsense about Bitcoin and me buying. I was going to ask you about that. Did you get? Did you get it unhacked? No, I'm working on it. I'm, you know, it's been two weeks since Holy I was locked out. But you know, they're putting these stories out there. And well, I was going to tell you the best thing though was the people that were like, "What is going on?" You know, like, and then there were the smart people that were like, "Uh, duh." Yeah, no, that's <laughs> not me. Really, <laughs> not his Instagram. No, but I'm, I'm going to get it back. Words. But yeah, don't don't buy into the the Bitcoin fraud. No, but that was that's... literally awesome because I remember reading like it was one of I won't leave the it's a friend of you and I's and they put a comment in there like, "Uh, can't you tell he's been hacked?" And I was just laughing. I was in stitches. I showed my wife. I was like, "Oh, dude," because I've I've known people that's happened to. But I mean, that's what they yeah. do, man. That's the problem. But it's no, I you know thing. I think we got I got, built out my own YouTube channel, so it's Dr. Nathan S. Bryan Nitric Oxide. And we need to have you on. We we started a new podcast called the Heartbeat Happy Hour. So when you come to Texas, yeah, I definitely want to come on. Well, I mean, I told um, our yeah. our our trusty friend at the uh, at the seminar to get in touch with me. She says you guys have a new affiliate partner to, person too. But please have her reach out to me. But uh, again, let's just finish. We'll, we'll shut this down. So again, guys and gals, please support the amazing people. Go to no 2 ucom Follow uh, Dr. Brian on Instagram and of course LinkedIn. And remember. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see everybody very soon. Thanks, Jay.